Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my experience after switching to the brand new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. Now featuring a more durable hinge, uh, we get brighter displays both on the outside and the inside, a new processor and better battery life. And after three weeks of using the Fold 5, I've gotta say there's a lot I really like, but also some things that I don't, and things that I think you should know about before buying. But don't worry guys, this video is gonna be covering everything you need to know, and as always, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. So the biggest feature of the Fold 5 is of course that two in one form factor, where unlike the Flip 5, which I looked at uh, earlier this week, the Fold 5 turns from what is pretty much a normal size phone uh, into a small tablet, yet that still fits in your pocket. And this opens up a world of use cases simply not possible on a more typical phone, but more on that in a sec. The glass and aluminum design uh, feels premium in the hand. I especially like the matte glass on the back, uh, particularly here in this cream color as it does a great job at hiding uh, and not showing fingerprints. The Fold 5 is also IPX8 water resistant and this means you can safely use it out in the rain. Uh, and of course, one of the main upgrades that the Fold 5 gets compared to the previous uh, Fold 4 is this new hinge, which now uh, eliminates the visible gap when the phone is closed, as you can see. Uh, and I really like this as not only does this look cleaner. Uh, it also means you get a thinner overall design, so it sits more comfortably uh, in the pocket. Though, like with the Fold 5, similarly to the uh, Flip 5, I still found that sometimes uh, pocket lint and other dust can creep its way in between the two displays, which isn't great, uh, but I'll touch more on my durability concerns as we go. Still, aside from that, the hinge itself uh, feels really good to open and close. Uh, I also found it has noticeably more resistance when compared to, for example, uh, the Pixel Fold from Google. Uh, and this is something that I like. Somehow it's just a little bit more uh, confidence inspiring to have a, a stiffer hinge and also means it will more comfortably rest uh, at any angle. Uh, say you wanna prop it up on a table to have it uh, facing upwards. It just feels a little bit more uh, secure on the Fold 5. And I've gotta say, there really is something special about the form factor of the Fold 5. You know, even now, uh, after some weeks of using the phone, being able to use what is pretty much uh, a normal phone on the front and then instantly open it to get, well, essentially a tablet that fits in your pocket uh, is really something that's quite incredible. Now, in my time with the Fold 5, uh, I found myself using the cover screen just about 50% of the time, which means uh, I use it just as much as the main screen. So the cover screen here is really quite important. So what's it like to use? Well, the uh, 6.2 inch size is really quite great. And ultimately uh, you use it kind of like a normal phone, albeit a little bit more narrow. Uh, apps run in full screen and do in a normal size. Uh, the keyboard itself, again, a little bit of getting used to at first, uh, but otherwise I can type on it quite comfortably. Uh, I also like how you can have have a different home screen layout on the uh, on the uh, cover screen compared to the main screen. And this is actually a feature uh, that I really enjoy on the Fold 5 and miss on the Pixel Fold. Now the uh, cover screen itself also gets super bright at up to 1750 nits, uh, which means you can easily see it in any uh, light, say when walking out outdoors and the sun is shining. Uh, and since it also has that really smooth 120 Hertz refresh rate, uh, it means you really not just, uh, you get a real flagship quality level display on the front here. Uh, you don't feel like you're compromising. And I think that is really important because as I said, this is the display I use just about as much as the main display. Now, briefly, uh, I wanna go back to the form factor of the cover screen, specifically the shape. As putting the Fold 5 side by side to the uh, Pixel Fold, you can see there's a pretty big difference uh, in the size here, where on the Fold 5, the cover screen is taller and also more narrow. And this, I think, makes the Fold 5 super comfortable to use uh, and hold in the hand. Uh, at the same time, of course, the slightly wider display on the Pixel Fold will give you a little bit more room. Uh, but ultimately, after having used both, I vastly prefer the cover screen on the Fold 5. I still think it's very usable uh, and it's so comfortable to be able to easily reach across the display. Uh, and at the same time, the more thinner, more narrow profile just sits so comfortably in your pocket. Now, of course, the biggest reason uh, you'd get a Fold 5 is that main display. And this large 7.6 inch display on the Fold 5 is just such a joy to use. Uh, like the cover screen, it is also 120 Hertz, which means you get buttery smooth operations. Uh, it is also equally bright at 1750 nits, meaning you can use it outdoors without any problems. Uh, text, finer details, all look really sharp and easily visible, uh, as well as that colors are nice and vibrant. And this really brings your content to life. And when you're talking about about a screen this big, it just creates a more immersive experience uh, in everything that you do. 
And then when the display is open, the Fold 5 really feels like a proper tablet. It is also incredible for multitasking. Uh, you can easily run three uh, or even four apps at once. For example, you can have a YouTube video playing uh, while browsing the web on Chrome, taking notes, and then have a uh, calculator off to the side all running at the same time. I also really like Samsung's addition uh, of the dock as this makes it super easy to switch between apps and also add apps to the home screen. Another great feature that I really appreciate uh, about the Fold 5 is how easy it is and how smoothly you can change from using the, uh, the outer cover screen to the bigger uh, main display. So to give you an example, let's say someone sends me a link to an article via text. Uh, I open it starting on the cover screen and then say I want to read further. Uh, I can find a place to sit somewhere, then open up the Fold and then instantly that article will be shown on the main screen. Of course, with bigger text showing more lines at a time, creating for a much more comfortable experience uh, when reading larger bodies of text. But this brings me to the less attractive aspect of the main display and also my biggest long-term durability concern. Now, I've said this before in my previous uh, Flip 5 review, but the same applies here, and that has to do with the crease, and knowing that the crease will always be the weak point of this phone. Now, I've seen countless examples of Galaxy Folds, even last year's Galaxy Fold 4, uh, with permanent damage forming in between, so the middle of the display, right by the crease, sometimes after just less than a year of normal use. Now, to be fair, uh, my Flip 5 has held up really well so far and shows no signs of damage, but of course it has only been three weeks. Uh, and while I do sincerely hope that this hinge will improve the longevity further, I'm gonna have to wait and see how this holds up over time. So be sure to stay tuned and subscribe to not miss my long-term review. Let's talk about the cameras. Now the Fold 5 actually has five cameras, uh, but I'm gonna be focusing on the three here on the back. So we get a 50 megapixel wide lens, a 10 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. Now this is actually the same setup as on the previous uh, Fold 4, but thanks to the newer processor that's inside, uh, we do get better image processing. But let's take a look at some examples of photos and videos shot on the Fold 5. Right, so in general, I found the color profile to be a bit more on the vibrant side, uh, and this makes photos really pop. Uh, check out the blue skies in this photo or the neon lights in this lounge. Photos are also nice and crisp with high level of detail. Uh, and in this photo of me, you can see both details in my hair, uh, as well as the fabric of my shirt, both remain nice and sharp. Uh, the Fold 5 also packs really good dynamic range. You can see both uh, details in the dark concrete of this building, as well as the blue skies up above. Both are well lit uh, and evenly exposed. I was also impressed with the ultra wide lens, which uh, keeps things sharp, almost as sharp as the main lens, uh, and keeps a consistent color profile. I mean, you can easily switch between the two lenses uh, and not have them looking completely differently. Now, one of the big advantages uh, of this fold form factor is that you can actually use the main camera as a selfie camera. So you can turn the phone over and then use the cover screen as a viewfinder, and this will give you much better quality selfies uh, as opposed to using the uh, selfie cameras either on the inside or on the cover screen. And you can see side by side, selfies using the main camera really look quite good. There's more detail detail uh, and also more depth. So definitely recommend shooting this way uh, if you can. And then in low light, the Fold 5 delivers stunning results, creating light where there is none, uh, while also adding minimal noise. And then when it comes to video quality, I found this to be strong too. In fact, not far off from the Galaxy uh, S23 Ultra. And then also specifically on the Fold 5, you can of course film yourself using the cover screen to frame the shot to get the best quality. I found the video quality to be sharp, stabilization is good, uh, and it adapts smoothly smoothly to changes in exposure. Now, overall, I would say the camera system uh, on the Fold 5 is flagship level and delivers in most areas. However, it's still not as good as the significantly lower priced Galaxy S23 Ultra uh, or iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, yes, these are very different phones that certainly don't fold, but this is important to consider and to know depending on how highly you rank cameras uh, on the list of importance for a smartphone. The Fold 5 uses the latest uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip that is actually optimized for Galaxy. So this is the same chip that we found in the S23 line uh, as well as in the Flip 5. And I gotta say, this chip is just as good on the Fold 5. Samsung's One UI version 5.1 on top of Android uh, 13 runs really well. Day-to-day -day performance is snappy and even in heavier tasks, whether that be gaming, uh, photo editing, or running uh, four apps at once, as you can see here. Uh, the Fold 5 never really seems to be pushed to the limit and keeps up really well. What can I say other than you get a uh, flagship performance with this phone as I would definitely expect for this price. 
And then when you combine the optimized processor uh, with One UI 5.1, the software experience on the Fold 5 feels really polished with day-to-day -day reliability uh, and smooth operation that is actually not far off what you get from the iPhone uh, over on the Apple side. And I must say, it's really amongst the best of what you'll get on Android. Additionally, Samsung also promises up to four years of software updates and five years of security updates. Again, not as good as the iPhone six to seven years, but Android manufacturers are catching up uh, and Samsung here is really setting the example, which is great to see. Now the new processor inside uh, is not just powerful, but also efficient. So I was actually quite impressed by the battery life on the Fold, uh, Fold 5 here. So the 4400 milliamp hour battery lasted me around six to seven hours of screen on time. And again, that's with roughly 50% uh, spent on the uh, cover screen and then 50% on the main display. So I would say with light to moderate use, it can last a full working day plus evening, where with moderate to heavy use, it lasts a full working day. And then when you do need to top up, the Fold 5 can be uh, uh, fast charge from zero to 50% in 30 minutes, and now also supports faster wireless charging at up to 15 watts. Okay, so who is the Fold 5 for? Well, I think if you're looking for a true uh, two-in-one device that on the go will function like a pretty typical uh, flagship smartphone, but that can then also instantly transform into a tablet for a pretty incredible uh, multitasking and video watching experience of the few options that are out there right now, I would say that the Fold 5 is the most polished and refined uh, folding phone out right now and is the one that I would recommend. That said, if you do choose to go with this folding form factor, there are still some long-term durability compromises that come with this type of phone, at least for the time being. Uh, of course, I'm referring in particular to the main display and the crease that sits in the middle. And to put it simply, the Fold 5 won't last as long as say an S23 Ultra and an iPad or an iPhone 14 Pro Max and a Galaxy tablet. But of course, none of these devices can do what the Fold 5 can. Now, other than that, with the Fold 5, uh, you get top level performance, a great software experience and software longevity. Uh, you also get a good camera system, decent battery life, and of course that incredible, uh, albeit slightly less durable, tablet size display on the inside. There really is no denying that this is one of the most impressive and innovative phones out right now. And I really have to commend Samsung uh, for leading the charge in this folding phone trend, a trend that I think is here to stay. Anyway, guys, let me know if you have any questions at all. As always, I will leave the purchase links down in the description. And for more of my thoughts on Samsung's recent Fold phones, be sure to check out my Galaxy Z Flip 5 review, which I'll leave on screen right now. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.